What does it take to clean up one of the most complex and hazardous nuclear sites in the world? Sellafield, sprawling across 2.65 square kilometers in the UK, holds 3.3 million cubic meters of radioactive waste, a challenge costing over 120 billion pounds and expected to last more than a century. Once a symbol of nuclear progress, this site now faces an extraordinary reclamation mission. Aging infrastructure, such as ponds and silos, leaking thousands of liters of radioactive water daily, highlights the immense risks of inaction. Yet, advancing technologies like robotic systems and innovative storage solutions are shaping the path forward. With high-level waste destined for a state-of-the-art geological disposal facility in the 2050s, Sellafield's cleanup is a critical race against time. How will this unprecedented effort secure the future while grappling with such an immense nuclear legacy? Let's find out. Sellafield's journey began during World War II when the site operated as a royal ordnance factory, manufacturing munitions to fuel Britain's war effort. Sprawling and industrious, it was a critical cog in the machinery of wartime production. But after the war, as the war ended the nuclear age, Sellafield's purpose shifted dramatically. By 1947, Britain, determined to secure its place as a nuclear superpower, repurposed the site as the foundation of its atomic ambitions. This marked the beginning of Sellafield's prominent role in shaping the nation's nuclear landscape. The 1950s ushered in a wave of innovation, with Sellafield at the forefront. The site became home to the wide-scale piles, groundbreaking air-cooled nuclear reactors designed to produce weapons-grade plutonium. These reactors were pivotal to Britain's Cold War strategy, but they also reflected the nascent understanding of nuclear safety at the time. In 1956, Sellafield achieved a monumental milestone with Calder Hall, the world's first commercial nuclear power station. Calder Hall didn't symbolize Britain's technological prowess, it was a dual-purpose marvel, generating electricity for the national grid while also producing materials for nuclear weapons. Operating for nearly five decades, it stood as a testament to the ambition and adaptability of early nuclear engineering. Yet, with progress came peril. In 1957, Sellafield faced its darkest chapter, the Wide Scale Fire. One of the most severe nuclear accidents of its time, the fire released radioactive materials into the environment, exposing critical flaws in safety protocols. By the 1970s, Sellafield had expanded into reprocessing spent nuclear fuel, becoming a key player in managing the back end of the nuclear fuel cycle. However, this growth also led to the accumulation of vast quantities of nuclear waste, from spent fuel rods to radioactive sludge. Sellafield became a repository for some of the world's most hazardous materials, solidifying its reputation as both a technological marvel and a site fraught with challenges. But what happens when a facility designed to handle the most dangerous materials on Earth begins to crumble under the weight of time? This is the dire question surrounding Sellafield, where aging infrastructure poses critical risks to both the environment and public safety. Take the Magnox Swarf storage silo, for example, a relic from the 1960s built to store magnesium alloy cladding stripped from nuclear fuel rods. After decades of use, it's no longer only outdated, it's leaking. Every day, approximately 2,100 liters of radioactive water, known as highly toxic liquor, seep from the structure, threatening to infiltrate the surrounding soil and groundwater. How do you contain a spill of this magnitude while the clock keeps ticking? It's a race against time and one of Sellafield's most daunting technical challenges. But the danger doesn't stop there. Enter the first-generation Magnox storage pond, an open-air facility dating back to the 1950s. Left exposed to the elements for decades, it now houses decaying nuclear fuel and over 1,200 cubic meters of radioactive sludge. Picture this, a ticking time bomb filled with some of the deadliest materials on Earth, perched precariously in deteriorating conditions. What if the structure fails? 
The release of these highly radioactive materials could devastate the local environment, contaminating water tables and putting nearby communities at grave risk. These high-risk sites are only the tip of the iceberg. Sellafield is home to millions of cubic meters of radioactive waste, spanning everything from low-level contamination to highly toxic substances. Many of these materials are stored in facilities designed long before modern safety standards were introduced. Can aging infrastructure keep up with today's demands? The sheer complexity and scale of managing this inventory require constant vigilance, cutting-edge solutions, and, most importantly, a relentless commitment to avoiding disaster. And then there's the Irish Sea. Once infamous for bearing the brunt of historic discharges, this body of water is a reminder of the long shadow Sellafield casts. While strides have been made in reducing contamination over the years, how do you truly clean up the legacy of decades past? This is where innovation meets necessity. Over the years, Sellafield has become a proving ground for groundbreaking technology and engineering ingenuity, redefining what's possible in nuclear reclamation. One of the standout innovations is the laser snake. But what exactly makes this tool so revolutionary? Combining high-intensity cutting lasers with a flexible robotic arm, the laser snake is designed to navigate the tight, hazardous spaces of sealed nuclear facilities. Imagine a device that can precisely dismantle radioactive equipment without putting human workers in harm's way. By reducing radiation exposure, this remarkable tool enhances safety while improving the efficiency of decontamination efforts. Then there's the Magnox Swarf Storage Silo, now presenting one of the most daunting challenges in nuclear waste management. How do you safely retrieve vast quantities of radioactive magnesium cladding and other hazardous materials from a structure never designed for modern retrieval methods? The answer lies in cutting-edge remotely operated cranes. Controlled by expert operators from a safe distance, these cranes delicately extract the waste, transporting it into specially designed steel containers. These containers, built to withstand the intense radiation of their contents, are then moved to interim storage facilities. It's a meticulous process, but one that ensures the waste remains securely isolated until the Geological Disposal Facility, GDF, a permanent solution, is ready. And what about the Pile Fuel Storage Pond? This relic from the Windscale era presents yet another formidable challenge. Decades of radioactive sludge and debris have accumulated in this open-air pond, which was once used to cool spent nuclear fuel. Here, teams equipped with specialized diving suits and protective gear are taking on the Herculean task of retrieving and processing these hazardous materials. This painstaking work is critical to reducing long-term risks and ensuring a safer future for the site. While interim solutions are essential in managing nuclear waste, they're only part of the equation. The ultimate goal? A permanent and secure solution that ensures safety for generations to come. Enter the Geological Disposal Facility, GDF, a bold vision set to redefine how we tackle one of the world's most pressing nuclear challenges. Slated for completion in the 2050s, the GDF promises to house high-level radioactive waste deep underground, within layers of stable geological formations. But why go underground? These ancient rock layers were carefully chosen for their natural ability to contain radiation, providing multiple barriers of protection. This design ensures that the waste remains securely isolated for tens of thousands of years, mitigating risks to human health and the environment. Still, achieving this ambitious goal is no small feat. How do you find the perfect site for such a facility? The process demands rigorous geological surveys to guarantee stability and containment, but the technical hurdles are just the beginning. Winning public trust and securing regulatory approval present equally daunting challenges. Local communities and stakeholders must carefully weigh the benefits of hosting the GDF against the perceived risks. Until the GDF becomes operational, the UK relies on interim measures to manage its nuclear legacy. 
Sellafield's vitrification plant stands at the forefront of these efforts, transforming high-level liquid waste into solid blocks by mixing it with molten glass. Why glass? This process not only reduces the risk of leaks, but also enhances long-term stability. These vitrified blocks are then stored in air-cooled vaults, offering secure containment for hundreds of years. Together, these layered solutions reflect a comprehensive strategy to address the UK's nuclear waste challenge. Sellafield's cleanup efforts are massive, with radioactive material enough to fill thousands of Olympic-sized swimming pools. The decommissioning process, expected to continue until at least 2120, will cost over £130 billion. But its impact goes beyond the UK. Sellafield's advanced technologies, including robotic waste retrieval and vitrification, are setting global standards in nuclear waste management, influencing decommissioning efforts worldwide. If you found this video informative, don't forget to hit that like button, leave a comment with your thoughts or questions, and subscribe for more content. Make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss an update.